What's going on guys? So today we're going to be doing a tier list for the mythic items. So do keep in mind a few things. This is from a PvP perspective and this is my opinion. So if you guys want to make a tier list, you guys can. If you want to do it for PvE, if you want to do it in your own opinion, that's okay. But this is my opinion and this is what I think is good. So this is going to be like outnumber PvP, 1v1s, uh, basically small scale type of PvP, what's going to be good. So for the items down here on the bottom, this is going to be Malakath here. And then the next one's gonna be pearls. I'm gonna call this pearls because I can't say the, the, the last word. I tried six times. I can't say it. Uh, Ring of Pale Order is the next one. Then we have Ring of the Wild Hunt. Then we have the Tonal Necklace, Tonal of Constancy. Uh, we have the next one is gonna be the Chest of Blood Lord's Embrace. Next is Snow Treader's Boots. And then finally, we have the Thrashian Strangler Hands. So for the first set, we're gonna get this one out the way already. Uh, it's gonna be the pearls. I can't say this word and I want to get this out of the way as quick as possible. This set is absolutely doo-doo. Uh, so it's mainly really good for healers. It's not going to be, you're not going to use this on a PvP tank. Uh, you're not going to use this on any type of PvP build that does damage. So the, the pearls set, it, whenever you cast a healing ability while in combat and your dominant resource is under 30%, you gain 5 ultimate. Having to be that low on your magicka pool or stamina pool, whatever kind of healer you are, uh, sure the ultimate is nice, but being that low of resources isn't good, uh, especially for PvP because you kind of want your resources up so you can kind of react. You don't want to be that low of resources just to drop your, you know, your max stats down and, you know, get your resources low, uh, just to get ultimate. I don't think it's really worth it. And I think that's why it's, you know, on the C tier. If you could go lower, then I would put it lower, but, you know, I don't want to make this tier list too big. So, pearls of... Elenofi, or however you say it, is definitely one of the worst mythic items in the game. So I'm not going to go in, into any particular order. Uh, I did that in pa my past few videos, but I think it's better just to do it this way and just give you a little bit more, you know, kind of suspense. Um, so next we have the Ring of the Pale Order. It's going to be A tier. I think it's definitely good. So the Ring of the Pale Order, it restores 18% of the damage you deal as health, up to a maximum of 2,750 per attack. You cannot be healed by anyone else but yourself, though. That's, the you know, the kind of the drawback. Do keep in mind, this heal will be reduced in half in PvP because of the Battle Spirit. So do keep that in mind. So it's probably right around 1,250 per attack. So... Um, the best, this is going to be really good on classes that have a lot of dots. So there's going to be like Magic DK, um, some, maybe even Magic Warden. This could be good on Stam DK. Basically any class that has a lot of dots. Now, some classes like Stam DK really don't need this, but like classes like Mag DK definitely could maybe try this. Even though they probably would be better off using a different mythic item. Uh, the Ring of the Pale Order is a good option. This is going to be classes, I mean, even like Stamplar could use this. Um, because they really can't run Malakath anyways, so uh, it's not really advised for Stamplars to run Malakath. I don't really like it, so Ring of the Pale Order could be another good option for Stamplar, just because just give you a little bit extra healing, uh, and you know whenever you deal damage, you're, whenever you're going offensive, you're going to be getting healed a little bit as well. So overall, I think this is definitely a good option. Uh, it's not the best, obviously, but it's a good uh, good alternative to Malakath, I think. So uh, yeah, Pale Order is definitely a good option, but it's just it's kind of mediocre, but it's uh, pretty decent so next we have the ring of the wild hunt this is going to be s tier in my opinion so the wild hunt ring it increases your movement speed by 15 percent while in combat and while out of combat increases your movement speed by 45 percent so the name of the game for eso pvp especially outnumbered pvp is going to be speed B bottom line if you can get to a kiting spot if you can move faster than your opponent you can get away you can kind of disengage a little bit um, the Ring of the Wild Hunt is really going to help. I really like this. I've ran this on Stamsork. Uh, it's so fun to be so fast. Um, I really like this this uh, mythic item. It's very fun to use. Obviously, it doesn't have any extra bonus damage, but what this thing does is you are a lot faster than your opponent. You can really disengage and kind of bring uh, fights, kind of drag them out a little bit to you know the outskirts, so you don't have to you know stay up close. And then you get swarmed by a bunch of people. You gotta, you can kind of pull them away. You can get away very quickly. Obviously, it's gonna be. It can help classes, even like Magic Necromancer, Magic Warden, basically even Magic DK. This can help classes that are very, very slow and give them a little bit of movement speed. What I think is very underrated about the Ring of the Wild Hunt is definitely the movement speed while outside of combat. So say, for example, you're running away from a Zerg and you finally get out of combat. So you're going to be zooming at 45% movement speed to even disengage even further. If you have some sweaty tryhards trying to kill you, uh, this can basically ruin their day. They're going to have to mount up 
and you know try to chase you down that way but at the you know being able to run that fast while you're outside of combat is going to be a very very nice especially just running from keep to keep in general uh, so you don't have to get on your mount if your mount's super slow so ring of the wild hunt is definitely very very solid and i i can't recommend farming uh this enough for your mythic item collection so next we have the snow treaders so i'm debating on this right now i think snow treaders is decent but just not amazing so i'm gonna put it in the b tier so snow treaders what it does is while you are in combat you are immune to snares and immobilizations that can be cleansed but you cannot sprint from the very beginning of it while you're in combat you are immune to snares and immobilizations that sounds great okay but the only ones that you know that you are immune to are the ones that can be cleansed i don't know how many times that i've been hit by a poison with snow treaders on and i can't move right uh that's a little bit annoying and i don't know if Zenimax even knows that or not but it's the immovability po poisons that uh that basically snare like s s immobilize you for like four seconds uh and it gives the opponent cc immunity um that po that poison cannot be cleansed even though it can be uh, after you are hit by the clan after you are hit by the poison you can cleanse it on a magplar but you just you're just stopped it race against time you get snared with with it on race against time you get snared with it on shuffle it doesn't matter what it is if you get hit by that poison you cannot move and even with snow traders it's the same way not being able to sprint is a very very big problem um, because you do increase your movement speed obviously while sprinting magic classes definitely need this just to be able to move and the only classes that i could really see this working on would be a stamina sork uh just so you can speed around with minor expedition and major expedition uh and you not know, get snared by pretty much everything except for obviously the poison so that's kind of why i have snow traders here it doesn't give you any damage it kind of takes up a space uh on your build so you can't i mean you can front bar and back bar set but uh it just doesn't do enough to be you know higher tier in my opinion so next we have the thracian stranglers now again i'm debating on a or b tier on this i'm gonna go b tier for a few reasons so let's just get into thracian what it does so killing an enemy grants you a stack of slow to call for one hour up to a maximum of 50 stacks each stack increases your weapon and spell damage by 23 but it reduces your health by 120 and reduces the effectiveness of your damage shields by one percent Slow to call is lost if you remove Thracian Stranglers, you go invisible, or you crouch. So with Thracian Stranglers, I feel like this set is very good for one purpose and one purpose only, uh, Emperors. I think being an Emperor with a Thracian Strangler is going to be very, very overpowered. Not only do you get so much recovery and sustain, uh, you get a lot of health. So running Thracian Stranglers, uh, you're going to lose about 6,000 health. Uh, if you have a fully maxed out obviously with an emperor you can you know run vicious death on the front bar or something like that and then run like clever alchemist on the back with thracian stranglers and just have so much damage literally insane amount of damage uh, you're really not gonna need the health too much because you are emperor so you can have a lot of health anyways uh, so this is definitely probably one of the only options the only other suggestion would be a magic warden maybe just because of their minor toughness passive you can get a lot of damage and a lot of health uh probably running like clever alchemist or something like that so losing that health is going to hurt you a lot on magden uh but that would be the only regular class i would suggest running this on just running an emperor in general this would be very very good uh, but anything else i really can't recommend it and that's why it's b tier because of how much health you lose sure you gain close to you know 1100 you gain 1100 weapon damage and spell damage but you lose out on 6000 health or the only thing that can really mitigate the, the loss of health is going to be a emperor in my opinion so next we have tonal of constancy i think that's how you say it i'm gonna put this at a tier i think it is very very good but there are a few reasons why it's not s tier in my opinion so the torque of tonal uh while your stamina is less than 50 percent this increases your magic recovery by 450 while your magicka is less than 50 percent this increases your stamina recovery by 450 so classes that I think it's going to be good on is going to be good on uh, Mag DK. Uh, it's going to be good on Stamina Nightblade, Magic Nightblade. Basically any class that kind of utilizes both pools of, of Stamina and Magic. Like Mag DK for instance, you know, they kind of block Tards. So they could definitely use the extra Magic Recovery while their Stamina is below 50%. 
You also have classes like Magblade that could really utilize this because, you know, they're going to use a lot of their stamina to dodge them around. Sand Blades are a given. They're going to be using Shadowy Disguise, so they're going to be able to get their magic up pull low. Uh, you even have Stamina Wardens that can really use this to use the Arctic Blast to keep their stamina pull and stamina recovery up. And also get the extra bit of mag recovery while their uh, stamina is low. The reason why I don't like this is because you have to be under 50%. That's the only reason why I like this. If it was 75% and it was like 250 mag and stamina recovery, I would be A-OK -okay with it. It would be perfectly fine. But I don't personally like the having to be under 50% magic or 50% stamina to get the opposite resource. 50% is a little bit low. Uh, I like to honestly keep my resources about 70% uh, in most fights. Obviously, until my resources start getting drained. But personally, I like to use my potion, you know, to keep my resources up. Rather than getting very, very low and, you know, trying to struggle to sustain. Uh, this is why I don't like tonal is because I don't personally see the value out of it. I do on some classes, um, like Stamina Warden, for example. I really like it on Stamina Warden just because of the Arctic Blast to get my, you know, magic pull up and, you know, s some sustain. So I don't have to run Eternal Vigor uh, on Stamina. That's kind of, you know, my opinion on that. But overall, it's definitely good. It's better on some classes like Stam Blade for sure. It's going to be very, very solid because, again, they don't use Malakath. So that's kind of why it's better for Stam Blades. So next we have the big bad Malakath. This is going to be S1000 plus 1000 tier. If... I mean, if you guys don't know what Malakath is, you're probably living under a rock or you really don't know much about PvP. Malakath is definitely one of th is the best mythic in the game. Um, so basically, if you guys don't know what it does, Malakath increases your damage done by 25%, but you cannot deal critical damage. So Malakath buffs all your skills by 25%. Malakath will buff all proc sets. This includes Selene's. This includes Veladreth. This includes... Savara's Scales, this includes Winterborn, this includes uh, Vatron Two-Handed Weapons, like the Vatron Two-Handed Sword. This includes every single proc set in the game, it buffs it by 25%. It's a little, little bit bonkers, I know. Um, but you cannot deal critical damage. So right now in this current meta, they've basically nerfed all crit chance. So they nerfed it in the champion point system. They're nerfing it next patch on the armor. So they're basically trying to sell Malakath because that's really the only way you can really get viable. Uh, on my stamina builds, I have in medium armor, like right at 22% crit chance. And there's no point in not running Malakath if you have 22% crit chance. Back in the day, in like, old imperial city like three four five years ago you could get 40 percent crit very very easily 40 to 50 percent was normal so they basically nerfed it by 20 percent uh since you know malakath this came out you know obviously it's been several years but honestly i feel like they're trying to sell malakath which is you know it's a business whatever um but it, it is a little bit pay to win in my opinion because if you don't have it you're obviously missing out on a lot of damage especially since the nerf to overall crit chance uh, and they're balancing PvE and PvP together, and that's just, you know, you know PvP is going to get the short end of the stick. That's just kind of how it goes. So, Malakath is definitely up there. If you don't have it, then you definitely need to get it because it, it is that powerful. Uh, just the only drawback is you can't do critical damage, but... So, having 22% weapon critical is really not going to make a huge difference to your crit chance, like your, your damage. So, you may as well just run Malakath at that point. And then, finally, we have the Blood Lord's Embrace. This set is doo-doo, trash... D tier, it would be a better option for this. Um, the reason why, so let me tell you kind of what it does. So dealing damage with a bash attack places a, per, a persistent uncleansable blood curse on an enemy. You can only have one blood curse enemy at a time and dealing additional bash damage moves the blood curse. Blocking an attack from a blood curse enemy restores 1535 magic to you. And this effect can occur once every one second. The reason why this set is absolutely terrible is because it you have to bash for one. So this is not very good for magic classes. Uh, it is only on one person. So if they're smart enough, obviously most people won't be. But if you bash somebody, now you have to block. So you, so you have to bash them and then block their attacks in order to get any magic back whatsoever. And there's a cooldown on once every one second. Which again, it could be okay in dueling maybe but only for like a mag dk uh because you're really not gonna need that much sustain and you know blocking sure having that extra mag sustain could be good but it's so 
in much in a niche that it's just not going to be good enough. It doesn't give you any damage. It just gives you sustain. Now, if you're fighting in a 1vx, you know, bashing somebody and then blocking their attacks, you basically have to be an L2 block tard to see any benefit out of this. In most magic classes nowadays, and especially in X-Patch, trying to be in light armor, your block cost increase is going to be like at least 3% minimum, maybe even more than that. Uh, so that's if you run like 4 light and 3 heavy, so you can kind of mitigate some of that block cost increase. So overall, that's it for my tier list, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys think I put something in the wrong spot, you know, tell me what your guys' thoughts are. Tell me what you guys think, and that's it for me, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.